Now I wasn't planning on making this video but a lot of you have actually asked how I use this burner to prevent contamination when I'm working. So I just thought I'd make a really quick video explaining how I get this burner to work for me. But before we get into that I want to explain what we're trying to achieve with the burner by starting with the main tool that you would use um, to prevent contamination while you're working in an open area which is a laminar flow hood. As I'm so artistically gifted, I decided I'll draw a nice diagram to explain this. So on the left we have the laminar flow hood. This will create a steady stream of constant air that will flow across your workspace, which will prevent any small particles from dropping down and reaching your workspace. They will get caught in this air and pushed away before they make it to your equipment. The air comes out in steady streams after making its way through one or two filters that removes any particles. The further away you work from the flow hood, the higher chance you've got of contamination. This is because the air as it travels, it slowly becomes more turbulent. And of course a flow hood is definitely your best bet, but they cost hundreds to thousands of pounds. So I like finding cheaper DIY alternatives that give me decent results. So this brings me to the gas burner method that I use. And the idea behind this is basically that we're creating a small pocket of hot rising air. And this allows us to work in a very small space around where the flame is. And we're talking about particles that are microscopic and weigh next to nothing. So it doesn't take a lot of heat to keep those off of our workspace. Now this method is definitely far from ideal but it definitely works for me. Some of the disadvantages are you do have to stay within a very small working space that is right next to the flame and we're not using laminar flow, we're using turbulent hot rising air so once that air gets to a, a certain point those particles will be flying around in every direction and there is a chance that they can come back down and make their way into the workspace from a strange angle that the air has created. But I prefer this to a still air box. This gives you the freedom to move and uh, it's just easier to see what you're working on as well. Especially for me because I've got shit broken eyes. I also wanted to give you this real life visualization of what I was just explaining as well. Here I can feel where the heat is so this gives me a rough idea of how big my safe working zone is. And here you can see just using this piece of paper that the hot rising air is enough to make it rise up. And then I did a couple of other tests where I would drop chunks of this paper and see where it would land and every time it would land just outside of that safe working zone that I had already established. So you can clearly see the safe working zone is very small but if I'm doing work with agar um, or anything like that. I'm only opening one pot at a time and that will be right next to the flame. So that's why this method seems to work. Again, we're talking about microscopic particles. So it really doesn't take a lot of heat to really push them off course when they're falling from above. But of course, don't just take my word for it. I'm just some dickhead on the internet. So I'd suggest doing your own research and maybe trying it out for yourself. But that is it for this video. So I'll see you on the next one. Love you. Bye. Oh shit, was that too many cats at the end? Nah, no one will notice.